Welcome to the international premiere of Destroyer. <laughs> to begin, we would like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. We are very grateful to have the opportunity to work in this community. This film, as part of our competitive platform program, is eligible for the Toronto Platform Prize, presented by Air France. It is also eligible for our Grosch People's Choice Award. You can vote for all of your favorite films at tiff.net slash vote. A huge, huge thank you to Elevation Pictures, Annapurna Pictures, and Rocket Science for providing us with this film today. They're all great partners of the festival, so please give them a round of applause. Director Karin Kusama has been to TIFF before with Girl Fight and Jennifer's Body, and I am beyond thrilled to have this amazing female filmmaker here with Destroyer. Karin has always challenged the conventional casting of women in film, and she does it again here, giving Nicole Kidman a role that is iconic in cinema, the rough around the edges cop out for revenge, but one that is normally occupied by men. She takes us to some dark places in her films, but the journey is always rewarding. Nicole Kidman, in my view, one of the finest actors working today, delivers, yes, <laughs> delivers another tour de force performance as Erin Bell, and she's joined by Canada's own Tatiana Maslany, who gives an equally transformative performance. We are very fortunate to have director Karin Kusama and some incredible cast members here for an introduction and an extended Q&A after the screening, so please stick around for that. But now, join me in welcoming the director of Destroyer, Karin Kusama. Hi. Um, thank you so much. It's um, just such, always such an honor to be at Toronto. I absolutely love this festival. Um, I want to bring on some of um, our closest collaborators onto the stage. Uh, I'll start with my um, kind of creative core, Phil Hay and Matt Manfredi, my screenwriters. Please come on stage. And uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, a lot of our cast here tonight. I'd love to um, bring on stage uh, Canada's own Shamir Anderson. Uh, our a wonderful actor, James Jordan. Um, the incomparable Tatiana Maslany. Um, the, I don't know how to, how do you describe Sebastian Stan? <laughs> uh, I also want to bring on um, my our close producing partner, Fred Berger. <laughs> and, and finally, um, I want to bring on um, truly the linchpin of this whole affair, the person who made it sing, um, Ms. Nicole Kidman. Um, while I'm here, I just want to take a quick opportunity to thank some people who are in the audience. I want to thank Micah Green and Dan Steinman from 30 West. My mic is gone. Oh, Megan Ellison and everyone at Annapurna Pictures. I'm... I'm so blessed to have two of my closest creative collaborators, uh, my composer, Teddy Shapiro, and my editor, Plummy Tucker, here with us tonight. And I also just want to take a moment to thank uh, our international partners, Rocket Science, and our Canadian partners, Elevation Pictures. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, finally, I just want to thank the Toronto Film Festival, its staff, its incredible um, legion of volunteers who make this festival possible. And, and ultimately, it's the audiences that make this the world-class festival that it is. I thank you so much. I truly appreciate your being here. Um, enjoy the film. <laughs> All right. I'd like to welcome back to the stage Karin Kusama and the cast and crew of Destroyer. I think they're somewhere there. So I, I guess I wanted to start, because so much of the film for, for us revolved around the writing and the genre and, and, and the sense of it, um, the, the oeuvre, if you will. Uh, and I wanted to start by talking about some of the influences, both for the script and for the direction um, in this genre for you. Um, what were some of your major influences coming to it? Uh, for me, I think it's a kind of a, a character-driven genre movie in the spirit of, I would say, a taxi driver or a clute or uh, more recently a film like A Prophet, but I know that Phil and Matt probably brought other, other influences to bear. We spoke a lot together, the three of us, about those movies that Karin mentioned, and we all love 70s movies, the 70s cop movies specifically, and um, specifically LA crime movies as well, but the same way that Karin's saying, I think we always looked at it as, you know, a woman under the influence is as big an influence as, you know, Serpico or Heat, you know, like that those were the things we were aiming to explore and try to tell a, a, a police story, but that was about a woman who was allowed to be everything in the movie, who wasn't just gonna be one, one thing. Um, and, you know, speaking of which, Nicole, obviously, uh, nothing needs to be said about your amazing physical transformation in the film, but also, um, I think that, uh, you know, there's an incredible mental transformation that goes on between the two time periods, um, and I was wondering how, how you kind of juggled that in terms of the shooting and preparation, and, and was there a lot of separation between the two, et cetera? Um, we shot most of the, um, the second part, I mean, the, the latter part of my life in, as Aaron Bell in, at the beginning and then we went back and did the beginning <laughs> which was a really good which was sort of jarring for me when we were talking about it um, before we started shooting I was like oh how's that going to work but then I have this this thing as an actor where I, I always say you go with it I mean I never try to fight whatever the circumstances are because I don't know what's best for me as an actor. <laughs> um, I may have a plan in my head and that it's usually wrong. So it's better for me to just go, go with the flow, Nicole. Um, <laughs> and that's for life as well. Um, <laughs> so by shooting the end with Sebastian, um, the beginning of the film at the end, that was actually really, really good because we already had, um, all of the damage and we, we sort of knew what we needed and we knew what the life force needed to be, which is what we discussed, is that there has to be a life force that, that gets shut down and destroyed um, in Erin and you have to see um, that. So we knew how much of that we needed to imbue into the second half. And, and kind of on that note, I was, I was curious for both of you, um, there, in, in some ways there's so, like percentage-wise, there's so little screen time of just the two of you alone, especially in the relationship. I wish sense. there was more. Yeah, um, but 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 in a way, it's... I'm with Tatiana. <laughs> Less is always more. Yeah. <laughs> in a way, it's so palpable, though. Like their their relationship is so present in the film, and I was wondering what what kind of work you did 
together in, did you rehearse before? Did you discuss the, the relationship in more detail than we see on the screen? Did you? On the first day, we kissed, and that was it. <laughs> that was my first day. I mean, that was, uh, you know. I, I leaned across the table and kissed you, <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> it helps set the stage. Um, but yeah, well, I mean, the great thing is when you have um, the writer um, married to the director, um, not you, Matt, but no, no, that still, would be strange and illegal. Still, <laughs> almost. Um, you have access to an enormous amount of. I can ask for all of the story, all of my history, everything, and that incorporates, you know, the relationship, everything. And in, so I would say, can you come up with things? And I would receive five, six pages of um, of my history, which was which is fantastic because that's normally the work that I've got to go and find and do and then say to the other actors, are you willing to, what do you think of this and what do you think of that? Whereas when you have the writers there all the time, they can give it to you and it's so, so there's no discussion even though I can change parts of it, but they'd already formulated such an incredible life story for Erin and it was dense and rich and and all there. So then I was able to give that to Sebastian and we were able to talk more about that. And that was, it, it was just, it's just, it's done for you. Um, I want to ask Tatiana, you know, we, we talked a lot about, in some ways you can look at this movie as a lot of things being cast against type or, or removing the, even the idea of type while casting. Um, but I wanted to ask you, from your perspective, what drew you to this script and to this role specifically in your career? Um, f first off, to the script was just the the non-linear nature of it. It felt so um, not masculine, I want to say. It felt really feminine, and which is so interesting in this genre to, to really um, bend bend the rules of, of how we normally see these stories. Um, so that that was a big thing for me, and then and then just Petra was so um, exciting, and the idea of Nicole playing this part was just like, oh my god! You know, I've just always looked up to her as this kind of um, beacon of risky choices and somebody who doesn't do the the you know the easy path or the trodden path. She's always you know changing it up and and really putting herself. In, in very different characters and boldly kind of doing that. So I was just excited to get to, to play opposite, you know, that and, and yeah, see what she was gonna do. Um, in, in, in that sense too, you know, you've talked a lot about in your career having these characters that are kind of mess, messy, complex women, but also just kind of messy, complex people because people are complex and shouldn't be boxed in in this type. Um, uh, was that part of the impetus of, of wanting to make this movie specifically, or, or was that just something you feel like you bring in, in conjunction with the writers um, to every film you're doing? Well, I mean, I think for me, I'm drawn to really uh, complicated and challenging characters. I think Aaron is, is very challenging and unapologetic, and there's a part of me that that wishes I could live a little bit, you know, sort of closer to that energy, actually. Um, I'm quite diplomatic, and there's something about Erin that was just like, <laughs> wow. You know, she really, she really, um, for me, I love her. Like, I, I, I love her, and I feel like what made me interested in this particular story was the idea that an audience could truly travel with a character into the this sort of their deepest secrets and their most profound shame and and feel feel what that had done to their life and and feel the the impact and gravity of their death um, that seemed important to me um. Uh, I, I also wanted to ask, one of the things that really struck us, we kept thinking over and over again, is it's such, you know, you mentioned L.A. and L.A. crime movies. It's such a great portrait of L.A. in a way that 
we could always pinpoint where they are at any time. And, and the drives and the street signs that you see and you could see going from here to there always. And I'm wondering if that was on the page, if that was purposeful in editing, if that was like, because the geography is so important in some ways. It was important to us. I mean, I grew up in LA. These two have been in LA for a long, long time. And so much of my memory and, and my sense of LA is through a car window. So I know the geography. I know, I know that sign on the 405. It's part of my journey to see my family down south. So it's, there, it's so, the, the car and the sights of LA and the geography of it is so much a part of memory, I think. And so it was important to us to, to kind of get that right. And that car, and that was one of the very first things we all talked about together. I mean, you had such a specific. Well, there's just something, I mean, people talk about traffic in L.A., but until you're in traffic in L.A., you, you don't really confront the existential <laughs> crisis of your life the way you do when you're sitting in traffic in Los Angeles and looking at all these other people by themselves sitting in traffic in Los Angeles. Yeah, Toronto's and, a contender. Um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe just these past during couple the days. Um, during, in, in the rain. Um, but it, 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 it creates a kind of... Um, I, I want to say kind of fractured headspace, how much time you have to spend in the car. And, but at the same time for Erin, living kind of, she's very comfortable in her car. It's kind of like her car is her chariot, you know? And so I thought there was something kind of interesting about how much time you too, as the actor, had to spend in the car. I mean, we, we spent a lot of time in that car together. Um, and so we got and to know each other quite well. It's all in the film. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you put every moment in. <laughs> um, the, other, the other thing that I feel like is almost a character in the movie is kind of the violence and the brutality of the violence. And I, I, wanted, I was hoping um, some of you, all of you, whoever wants to speak to the importance of the brutality of the violence and how it plays to the characters, how it plays to the script, how it plays to the story. Um, yeah. I know I made that very open-ended. So, I, I, I mean, I, I'll speak to it just because I have made some movies that depict uh, pretty pretty intense violence and I, I struggle with it um, to a degree because it's not who I am at home, it's not my, my daily energy. Um, but the world that Aaron lives in and, and the world that most of us live in is in fact, um, there is a lot of brutality and I think Phil and Matt wanted to find humanity in that um, and kind of take the lid off of this this idea of a hard-boiled detective story and find the wounds that kind of drive Aaron to be so violent in the first place. You, Karin said before something that really lit something up for me was talking about the rage that Aaron feels and also the rage that a lot of the other characters feel and that in Aaron's case the rage is both directed outwards and it's her power but it's more profoundly directed inward and it's her wound. And so that rage expresses itself in a lot of emotional violence and a lot of physical violence. And I think we always thought, and you know, whenever we talk together about the violence in the, in the movie, that it, it had to be about, um, it's emotional. I mean, it's, it's, it's with consequence. That was always the bottom line, our hope. Yeah, because I feel like you can see it as the audience in, in, in the brutality and the missing teeth and the et cetera. So, um, I'm going to open up to the audience and ask if you have any questions. Right here. So the question was, were there any scenes in the movie that were difficult or harder to do than you expected? I mean, the film was really hard for me um, because I, it, it's so extreme in terms of so different from who I am. I wanted it to be real and authentic. I didn't want to be um, showing up and doing a performance. So I kind of had to move into a place and exist in that place for a period of time that I didn't like being in, um, mentally, physically, all of it. and. I didn't quite realize till I was in it what, what it was gonna take, if that makes sense. Which, you know, maybe if I had, I would have gone, mm, I don't really need to go there right now. But 
uh, so, so much of my career has been that and my life is where I go, I, I jump into something not knowing what it's actually going to be and I've, it's always done me well. Um, so I try not to put too much thought or analysis into why I'm choosing something or why I'm going there. Um, but at the same time, it's crazy for me. I was sitting backstage just watching the last um, 15 minutes of the film and I'm like, God, is that me? <laughs> and it's weird because I look at it and it feels like almost a, like a dream because it was so um, different for for me to exist in that place. And and but I'm so glad that I did it because I love I love jumping in with Karen and and um, pushing myself and pushing the boundaries and and just getting to work with these actors and you know um, touch when you talk about the violence Tatiana and I roll like beating the crap out of each other <laughs> it was <laughs> I I was putting her in the trunk of that car going what what is this but. <laughs> <laughs> but she's one. so game and um, so good um, and I'm so look forward to seeing everything you're going to do in your future because you're amazing. Right here. Wiggy yeah, movie, did yeah. you say? He, he was saying he was ranking your movies by wig, um, and and where you feel like this falls in terms of that. <laughs> but that's an awful question. I, know, I, we, we, I am shutting that question down. Yeah, I, I was gonna say you don't have to answer that if you don't want to. Let's let's move on. Is there another? I'm looking up in the balcony. Just yeah, right there. So the question was about the cyclical nature of the script and, and when in the writing process you decided to end the film that way. Um, that was, uh, that was, you know, uh, that was the in conception and, you know, from the beginning we, we were, that's the way we wanted to structure it. And with that last scene, um, the, I think the purpose of putting it there and the why I love having it there is I think that it makes it much more tragic to hear them so optimistic about their plan when, you, when you've already known how terribly it's going to go. And also it's that, there's also that last tiny moment of hope in her life, like the last time before it kind of goes south and as she's dying, it's kind of a one last nice memory. I think we also realized at some point that when we were talking with Karin that just the phrase kept, came up that this is a story of someone, a detective investigating herself. And that's what the story literally is. And then obviously that's what she's doing uh, at great cost emotionally. So that we sort of realized that that circular thing wasn't just for the, the tale, but it was really what the character was. And I think it's a little bit how, of like how memory works. You know, you don't always go through your life uh, chronologically and you isolate certain moments and you dwell on certain moments. And... Um, right here. Uh, let's go behind you, and then we'll go to you. Um, hi. So, first off, uh, amazing film, and my question is actually for Sebastian. So, uh, you mentioned less is more, and uh, the people who follow your work are no strangers to the fact that you are probably one of the best actors who can act with your eyes alone. Um, whether, you know, with your soldier... <laughs> So, so, so the, the question was about, about 
preparing for the nonverbal acting between the two of you and, and, and also kind of making an impression in the small amount of screen time that you had? No, I mean, I appreciate that. But uh, no, I, <laughs> I think that, um, you know, um, I was talking to Karn earlier about, you know, this whole experience of making movies and stuff. And it's also what Nicole said, which is, you know, you can always prepare and do all these things and then you show up and you really have to stay open to what's there and what other people are bringing and, and just kind of see where the thing wants to go, you know? And I came in with all kinds of things and, you know, and, and at least um, the good thing is when you have a good script and you have a great director um, and people you can trust, you know, and then you do come in and you are prepared, but you do remain open, then you can actually allow the thing to take you on the ride that it wants to go, you know? And every movie, I think, has some sort of a frequency kind of that, you, you know, as an actor, you try to tap into. And, you know, it, it just was so much more interesting to not explain things, you know, and just to let you guys, like, kind of think maybe or figure out what might be tra transpiring between them, you know, in their minds. And so, I don't know. I, in life, we don't say things the way they are or things that what we mean, you know, we say different things or we always think the other person's gonna really understand what we mean somehow or guess, you know. And so so no in that aspect I have to give credit again to the script and, and, and to the direction there, you know, to just kind of you know, I wanted to do a million things, but thankfully, you know, Karen was like, look, just just keep it yeah, you know, less is more keep it to where it is and just keep you know, keep going. And so anyway. That's that. I feel like so often when we're, when we're writing and discussing a scene, we'll say to each other, well, that, well, that can just be accomplished in a look. You know, we don't need a line there. That can just be a look. And it's like, to have these actors, you're like, that's just going to be a look. <laughs> you know, it's, uh... Do you feel like part of that is also the, obviously the working relationship with Karin too? Like having some sense of knowing what she's going to do with it if you're writing it down? I think that's such a big part of what we do, like that we have absorbed because Karin is, I mean, it, it's, it is her vision that you see, and we feel like we're contributors to that, and we feel that we've absorbed one another's aesthetic, and like, so when Matt and I, there's not a moment we're not thinking about this movie through the lens of Karin and what she's gonna do and what her interests are and what we think she wants to explore, and then she'll tell us if we're close to that or not close and what we have to do to get there, but I think we've all tried to and I felt this really strongly in this short time we all got to spend together on the set. We did not shoot very long. It was incredibly hectic, but we all, we all absorbed each other, and we, I felt so much trust with everybody, and, and, and that comes from Karin. That comes from Karin creating this world that we can all kind of pour ourselves into. Uh, yeah. I promised I would go back here, right? This is the Sebastian section. According to IMDb, you haven't worked with a female director in quite a long time. How did that differ from other directing experiences, specifically? So the question was about um, you working with a female director and how it differed from other directing experiences, specifically to Karen, too. Well, um, women have more balls than men. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't ever really like, I, like, you know, for me, I quite naturally, uh, when I go to work, sort of fall into this. I, I tend to want to fall into this more subservient, you know, kind of role as an actor to the director. So, you know, and, and I go there for trust and for kind of guidance. And so, I never really, in my mind, kind of, you know, sat there and thought, oh, you know. Um, male or female or, you know, but in this case, I actually, truthfully, really did feel that Karn communicated much better than some of the male directors that I, ha I did have, you know, I, maybe because she really did know what she, want and she wanted and she was very specific about it um, and, f and firm in, in her, you know, sort of delivery and I guess that helps you because you're so out there in the desert sometimes, you know, and you just need need that guidance, but um, I'd certainly love to keep the track going, you know, with female directors at this point. Um, right here. Uh, 
So the question was for all of you, do you have a favorite scene now when watching the movie? Uh, I'll, I'll jump in and just say that, I, I mean, I love so many scenes, but after Aaron crashes the van, um, we see her go through a couple of complicated sort of emotional steps, which is uh, to realize she still wants to steal the money. Um, and then to go to that dumpster and throw that money in there, knowing she's gonna get it later. And then Nicole just did this thing from take to take very differently, but in the, in the take we used, she started shivering. And it was as if we were watching a person in real time going into shock. And I just feel like when you see an actor not acting anymore, just um, living in this very special, um, rarefied space that is so generous that we were given access to Aaron's physical shutting down combined with the greed that still drives her and then the recognition that it was all for nothing because Chris is gone. I just, that moment gives me chills every time I watch it because I think it, it's such an encapsulation of the character and you know, that was just, that was an awe-inspiring day. I also love the kind of unceremonious death of Silas and the way Aaron, I just want to know what, what that is for her. There's so much going on that leads up to that moment and the way she plays it with so much restraint in terms of it isn't this, expo you know, there is none of that expulsion of the emotion or anything. It's just kind of a, you know, practical thing. There's no big speech either. There's no big, you know, revelation or anything. It's just the simple act of it. And I thought that was so jarring and, and amazing to watch. I, I don't want to move on if any of you don't feel like you have to, but... Yeah. No, I mean, I'm just going to double down on what Karin said. I mean, I think for me, as I told, you know, I, I said this to Nicole when I saw her. I, I mean, I just, that scene where after she puts the bag in the trash can and, and she, you know, she comes down and she, that sound that comes out of her is a... You know, I think everybody can feel that chord that's such a specific, true, honest human chord. <laughs> you know, you can't make that or s synthesize that or, you know, in any way, shape, or form. And it comes from such an honest place, you know. And, and it just, I love when things like that happen because it just, we're all, we all forget everything. We just, in that moment, we're all in the same spot, you know, because we know what that is. I'm just really grateful for, I, I just say I'm very full of gratitude for all of these people's work and so I sit and watch many of these scenes and they just uh, it makes me very happy and I think the one that I keep coming back to is Aaron with her daughter in the diner where um, that to me was always the heart of the movie or what it was really really about and um, that um, I, I like to live in that scene so yeah go ahead I'm just grateful to have had the chance to do it. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard to get these films made. So I think it's not so much having a favourite scene as just that everyone was willing to just jump in and do it and that we were given um, the chance to do it and the money to do it and, and that we got to do it. Anyone that makes films in this room would know it's really hard. And... Um, and so just incredibly grateful to get to do what we do. We have time for a couple more. Um, I'm gonna go in the back row closer to the aisle. Yeah, the, yes. <laughs> the question, which... I don't think I always have. I've sort of struggled. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've veered off 
things and, you know, any actor will tell you, you get sort of s tempted to do things and you think, oh, this is a good place to go. And that. I mean, ultimately, I'm, I love the craft of what I do. I love being an actor. I'm deeply committed to the art form of it. I'm deeply committed to, to storytelling. And it's that simple. And so if you just, I mean, for me, I just always come back to, I just want to act. Um, I've wanted to do it since I was a little girl. I'm much older now and I get to keep doing it. And thank God I wasn't pulled off my path, you know, because it's taken me to the most incredible places and given me such um, extraordinary experiences. And I've fallen many times and I've gotten back up. And it's that, so I don't ever see it as, as um, integrity or, or anything. I just see it as this is my path, this is what I do and, and I'll keep trying to straight, stay true to the spirit of it. Yeah. We have time for one more. I'm gonna go back here. So the question was about the title and where the title came from. It's, hard, it's, a, it's a little murky, but we had a text chain going between the three of us. <laughs> and we just kept, and, and I think, I don't, I, I will, one of us, I don't remember which one, had, okay, it was me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that way, if you don't like it, yeah. Bill's responsible. <laughs> uh, I think that that word had been, I had written that word down, and we, I wrote it down, like left it on your desk at one point, not even when we were trying to title this movie, just I was like, that word is so powerful, and it, it means so many things, and just kind of had that thought years ago, and then we were trying to figure out what we're going to call this movie, and I was like, it just, like that came up, and we were just talking about how, how many destroyers there are in the movie that she is, it, Silas is. They, they, the other characters are time, time ambition, money, um, need, all that stuff is, can destroy. And so I just remember really tentatively typing the capital. I said, okay, and I did the, the thing like, okay, I have an idea, new text, you know, like five different texts. And I said, you destroyer? <laughs> and then like the little bubbles popped up and Karin was like, love it. <laughs> <laughs> all caps. So like, yeah, <laughs> and then that's how, that's how it happened. So. <laughs> well, on that note, I want to thank you guys so much for coming and thank bringing you. the film. Thank you all.